So we've been graphing for quite a while, and we've been introduced to several different forms to graph linear equations. And so what I'm going to do today is just very quickly review every form that we've done thus far, and then I'm going to show you what to do when it's not in a usable form. So let's start first with slope-intercept form. You should know slope-intercept form, if I ask you for the form of that equation, that is y equals m x plus b. That's the most common form of an equation. And so real quick, review of that. First one, y equals 1 fourth x plus 3. Well, that means the coefficient of x is 1 fourth, and that is our slope. The y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, 3. So I'm going to start at 0, 3. So I go up 3. I put a dot there, and from that point, I rise 1, run 4. So I'm going to rise 1, go to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4. And remember, the opposite of going up and to the right is down and to the left. And remember, down is negative, but left is also negative. And a negative over a negative, remember, is also a positive. And so then there's my line. And if I wanted to check a point, I would just pick a point on the ordered pair, plug it into the e equation, and see if it works. Now, stop the video. Actually, stop it and do the next two. No, really. Stop the video. And here are your answers. Quick reminder that when you have a positive slope, positive slopes go from low to high when you're reading from left to right, and then negative slopes go from high to low. So they go down if you're reading from left to right when you have a negative slope. So pay really close attention to that. Now our newest form is point slope form. And that form, if you know it already, go ahead and write it, but it's y, whoops, y minus y1, or y sub 1, and that right there is your y value of a point equals m, which is your slope, and then in parentheses is x minus x sub 1. And so what this equation does is it gives you a point and a slope. The thing that you have to remember about, however, is that when you pull the point out, this number right here, the opposite of this number, happens to be your x value, and this number happens to be your y value, the opposite of this number. And then the slope is always in front of the parentheses. So in this problem, this form gives you a slope of 5. It tells you the slope is 5. And then the point that this line is going to go through is 2, 6, positive 2, 6. So we would start at positive 2, 6. So I go right to up 6. And I'm going to start right here at the very, very top. There's the point 2, 6. And then from there, I'm graphing a slope of 5 over 1. Remember, 5 over 1, which means I'm going to try to rise 5 and then go to the right 1. But I can't do that, so I have to do the opposite of that, which would be to go down 5 and to the left 1. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I do it again. Down five, one, two, three, four, five, and left one. And there you have it. So this form tends to be one of the forms that lots of people forget about. This form is super simple. Sometimes people try to change these forms to slope-intercept form, and then if you do that, you find sometimes you can't graph your y-intercept because it doesn't actually fit on the graph. So you've really got to make sure that you remember this form. We're also going to use this form later to write equations. So stop the video. It does not help you to just write down what I'm writing down. So actually stop the video and do the next two and then check back in to make sure you're correct. And here are your answers. Again, notice positive slopes go up, negative slopes go down. If you made a mistake, make sure you fix it. Next, we learned about horizontal and vertical lines. Horizontal lines have y-intercepts. Think about that. If I'm going to draw a horizontal line, it's going to go like this, right? It's going to hit the y-axis. So it has a y-intercept, which means the equation is going to be in the form y equals the y-intercept or any y-value along the line. And then vertical lines, think about vertical lines. Vertical lines go like this, they hit the x-axis, right? So that's going to have an equation that is in the form x equals the x-intercept. 
So we just have to know that. And so then there's a little reminder I have here. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero, and you know the y-intercept. Vertical lines have an undefined slope, and you know the x-intercept. So the very first one is y equals negative 4, which means since it's y equals, that's a horizontal line. The slope is 0, and the point that it goes through, I would say 0, negative 4, but you can say any ordered pair where the y value is negative 4. So I'm going to go down 4, and I'm going to graph a horizontal line. Now stop the video, actually stop it, and do the next two. And here's what the next two lines look like. One reminder, I do not want you to abbreviate the word undefined. I couldn't fit it on the line, but I kind of got it to go underneath. But undefined, you have to know that word. Don't try to abbreviate it. Now let's move on. All right, so what do you do if it's not in a form? It's not in slope-intercept form. It's not in point-slope form. What you try to do is you try to put it into y equals mx plus b form, into slope-intercept form. Okay, so what we do is we put it into slope-intercept form. Unless there's no y value, right? So then I'm going to write here no y question mark, then it's vertical. And we would solve for x. Okay, so now let's take a look at number one. You know how to do this. This is not in slope-intercept form, but you have an x and a y, so we're going to isolate y. So we're going to subtract x from both sides, and we're going to be left with negative 3y equals 3 minus x. Then to get y alone, I'm going to divide everything by negative 3. I'm going to go ahead and separate and divide both of those terms by negative 3, and then pay real close attention to your signs. You get y equals negative 1. 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. And then look, a negative over negative is a positive. And then don't forget, the number that would go in front of that x is a 1. So it would be plus 1 third x. So then you have your slope of 1 third, and the point that it goes through is the ordered pair 0, negative 1, which is your y-intercept. So we're going to go down 1 when we graph it, and then we rise 1, run 3. So we graph y-intercept of negative 1, and then the slope of 1 third is down and to the right. I'm sorry, up and to the right, or down and to the left. And there's your line. Now number 2. Number 2 doesn't have a y, so what do we do? We solve for x, and it's a vertical line. So I subtract 8 from both sides. And 4 minus 8 is negative 4 equals negative 2x. And then I divide by negative 2. And I get here that x is 2. Okay. So now most of you probably have this a vertical line going through x is 2. And then the slope is undefined. And the point that it would go through would be anything where x is 2. So I'm going to just stick with the x-intercept of 2, 0, but you can say 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, whatever. Anything as the x is 2. So the rest of this is really meant for you to do on your own. But I'm going to read the directions to you because I know how you guys sometimes don't like to read directions. So it says, for the first box, tell if the equation is in slope-intercept form, point-slope form, is a horizontal line, a vertical line, or none of these. If it is none, change it to slope-intercept form, get y alone first. And if you're missing a variable, you know that it's horizontal or vertical line, so you just solve for the given variable. And what I'm looking for here in the tell what info you know, you're going to give me a slope, you're going to be able to figure out a slope, and you're going to give me a point that it goes through. So if it's in point-slope form, you know a point and the slope. If it's in slope-intercept form, you know the slope and the y-intercept. If it's a horizontal line, you know the slope is zero, and then you know the y-intercept. If it's a vertical line, you know that the slope is undefined, and it's in an x, it's x equals, so that would be an x-intercept. Now stop the video, try these next three, and then check to see if you are correct. And here are your answers. So make sure that you've graphed them correctly. 
One thing to notice that over here, I went ahead, if it was in none, I wrote none right up here, and I used the space right right here to put it in slope intercept form, and then I just drew an arrow. My slope intercept is three, and my slope is negative three fifths. It's totally fine with me if you do that. Now I want you to stop the video again, and I want you to finish the rest of the problems on this paper. And then you can chime back in and see if they are correct. So honestly, if you haven't stopped the video and done these problems, you're kind of cheating, so make sure you do that. And here are the answers to these three. Um, one more thing to note, point slope form has to have the x minus x value in parentheses, right? So the, the middle one, even though it looks like it might be in point slope form, isn't because it doesn't have the parentheses. So you had to put this one in slope intercept form. This one was in point slope form. Please be mindful of when something is in point slope form because when something is in point slope form, it is best to use the point and the slope in order to graph it. Now the next three questions, you just have to tell me what form it's in and what that form tells you. And here are the answers for the last three. So you didn't have to graph the last three, you just needed to tell me the form and what you know about it. So the very last one was the only one that wasn't in a form, so I put it in slope-intercept form and I just point it to the slope and the y-intercept. I hope this has clarified a bunch of things for you about graphing. You can go ahead and work on your next thing. Good luck.